the unexplained, the mysterious, the unknown. Humans are curious creatures by nature, and while most things in our world have clear purposes, clear origins, clear definable laws in which they exist, sometimes we'll see, hear, or experience something that simply defies all of which we know about the world. The unknown. My Unsolved Mysteries iceberg performed very well, and people seemed to really enjoy it, and so today I thought I would go back for round two. I found this iceberg chart on the iceberg chart subreddit, so shout out to Crescent Commoner for posting it. Anyways, without further ado, this is the Unknown Mysteries Iceberg Explained. So the first thing we'll be covering today is DB Cooper. We're starting off strong here. Now, I had no idea who this guy was until researching him a little bit. And ladies and gentlemen, the story of DB Cooper is amazing. A man known by the alias DB Cooper performed a GTA level heist on November 24th, 1971, in which he boarded a Boeing 727 aircraft on a flight from Portland to Seattle. A simple 30 minute flight usually. But on this day, the business suit clad mid 40s DB Cooper decided to spice things up. He ordered a bourbon and coke, and shortly after receiving it, he handed a note to the flight attendant which stated he had a bomb in the suitcase that he had brought alongside him. He made his demands clear, he wanted $200,000, the equivalent of 1.26 million in today's currency, in cold, hard American cash. Additionally, he wanted four parachutes and a fuel truck waiting at Seattle airport. He ordered a second bourbon on his tab like a chad and offered to request meals for the crew when they landed. When they arrived, Cooper let the passengers off the plane but kept the crew on with the fuel truck refueling the plane. They flew off after Cooper got his demands. He orders the whole crew into the cockpit. Now, you're thousands of meters up off the ground. You're the most wanted man in the USA. What do you do? If it wasn't apparent with the parachutes, the dude jumped out of the plane. Nobody knows exactly where he landed. He was never seen again. But allegedly, at the time, it was raining and getting quite dark, and D.B. Cooper was never seen again. He vanished into thin air, I guess. Nobody knows if he survived the jump. Nobody knows if he's still alive today. Nobody knows his true identity, and the police have had over a thousand suspects, but have come up with zero results. Personally, I like to think he survived. I think his choice of attire being dressed in a full business suit, while potentially stupid if he's just jumping to the wilderness, I kind of feel like he had a plan. I feel like his plan was so ballsy, there just had to be something at the end. It, it seems so well put together until he jumped out of that plane, but I, I kind of feel like he had something going on. Regardless of whether or not he survived, what a chad. The babushka lady. Okay, so if you watch my Unsolved Mysteries iceberg, different thing, I know, you will know I spoke a bit about the JFK assassination. The topic of conversation was more so why both JFK and then in turn Lee Harvey Oswald were assassinated. Well, we're going to change attention today and speak a little bit about a less known figure, but an interesting figure nonetheless. That being the babushka lady. It's actually thought that she videoed the assassination. Even today, we only have a handful of camera angles that show it. While after the shooting, you can see people try and take cover, the babushka lady kept standing up with what people think was a camera in her face. However, what's unknown about all of this is the identity of the babushka lady. You would have thought that someone that had footage of the president's death would have come forward, right? The footage could have been worth thousands, and even if you're not in it for the money, the camera angle alone would have, at the very least, been etched into history. Alas, the babushka lady, named after her attire being similar to that of an elderly Russian woman, has never been identified, despite some people coming forward with claims. Did she die soon after? Possibly. Did she know something that no one else did? To not even flinch after the assassination shows journalistic integrity to say the least. However, not sharing your work afterwards? Those things are incompatible. Who was she? What did she know? What did she see? What did her camera see? We might never know. I've spoken a bit about historical events and such, but this next century is one maybe even more important than the rest. What is the purpose of dreaming? There is really no solid answer, merely theories. Now, I achieved a grade C at GCSE Psychology, so I believe that I'm very qualified to answer this question. Sigmund Freud, on the one hand, believed that studying dreams provided the easiest road to understanding the unconscious activities of the mind. They were manifestations of subconscious desire. If we want something in our day-to-day -day lives, even if we repress it as much as possible, this desire will come out in our dreams and therefore dreams have meaning and purpose. The other most well-known explanation of dreaming is activation synthesis hypothesis proposed by Hobson and Macaulay. Now, while it sounds hard to grasp, 
The theory is that dreams are just created by changes in neuron activity, so like brain waves, that kind of stuff, sciencey stuff, during a part of sleep called REM or REM. For this reason, they argue that dreams have no meaning and they're actually just kind of electrical impulses firing around in your brain. And I want to know, what do you think? Do you think that dreams have meanings? If so, let me know down in the comments. I think that the Soul Wave Firth Spaceman is something that, well, I won't cover it for very long, is just plain bizarre. Looking at this picture, how do you explain this spaceman? Legitimately. This picture is oftentimes dubbed the Solway Spaceman and was taken in 1964, from what I could guess a long time before Photoshop was available to the general public. The context of the photo is that a man named Jim Templeton took three photographs of his daughter at the Berg Marsh. He took the pictures and when he got them back, this spaceman appeared who allegedly wasn't there at the time the pictures were took. The pictures have since been confirmed as real, they haven't been doctored. So what is it? There have just been a few unexplainable pictures, but the mystery is simply unknown. It looks like an astronaut, it looks eerily similar to an astronaut. So what do you think? The video that you're looking at right now is 11BX1371, which at first glance might kinda just seem like a spooky, creepy video of a plague doctor, but this thing has layers. Many have tried to decode the video, but when deciphered, apparently it leads to pictures of tortured people and dismemberment. For a while, people were wondering, who is this person? Who's behind the mask? And what are they trying to tell us? And in November 2015, we got an answer to one of those questions at least. It's likely that the creator goes by the name Parker Warner Wright, although this might just be an alias, it probably is, as Wright claimed that the video was his, and created another video, 11B31369 soon after to prove it. So we know who the culprit was. However, the part that remains unknown is the true meaning behind the video. Some people think it's just a prank, but writers intent that there is a hidden message inside and that people just have to work it out together. No one person can decipher the entire video, people have to collaborate. Some other people think that the message behind the video is that of a political statement or racist statement or could even be taken as a bioterrorist threat. However, despite the video coming out five years ago now, going on six this year, nobody's worked out. This mystery remains unknown by all, apparently. Now, I'm sure you all know of the Mandela Effect, but just in case you don't, I think that this entry could be quite interesting. Would you happen to know who these characters are? Well, a lot of people would say these are the Berenstein Bears. However, if you said the Berenstein Bears, you would be wrong. These, my friends, are the Berenstain Bears. Essentially, the Mandela Effect is a phenomenon in which people believe that their realities have kind of been altered. They distinctly remember something, whether it be a name, logo, etc., and it kind of turns out that that never was. The phenomenon was named the Mandela Effect after Nelson Mandela died, making people ask how. A lot of people thought that he died years prior. It's meant to be a glitch in the matrix, if you will. Take the Fruit of the Loom logo, for example. Which one looks right? Well, if you said this one, you are wrong. Apparently, the Fruit of the Loom never had a cornucopia, despite countless people being absolutely sure that it did have one. I might say I thought it had one. Because you always had a plain yellow tail, not this one. C-3PO always had a silver leg. He's not all gold. Mirror Mirror on the Wall was never said in Snow White, despite it being the most famous quote from the movie. Neither was Luke, I am your father. Hello Clarice was not the first thing that Hannibal Lecter said in Silence of the Lambs. That wouldn't make any sense because he didn't know who she was. The list goes on. Perhaps we're all collectively getting these things wrong. Perhaps it's some sort of alternate dimension shit, and, and we just don't have any idea. Maybe it's... I mean, who knows? It's really hard to say. Regardless, the Mandela Effect is one of the most interesting phenomenon in social psychology, and its origin is unknown. We have no clue why millions of people around the world seem to report it. They remember these false memories that are almost true, but not quite. The Sodder Children, this story is so eerie, so mysterious, so perplexing, and yet still so unknown. It was Christmas Eve, 1945 when John and Jenny Sodder, as well as their nine children, were sleeping in their home. Suddenly, Jenny Sodder wakes up to the smell of smoke. Their house was on fire. Both parents and four of their children, Marion, Sylvia, John and George Jr. escaped the house. The four children included the oldest three as well as the youngest. The other five children were never seen again. However, this is weird because, say the children died in the house fire, when a human body burns, 
Some parts are meant to remain. While the coroner said that they burnt to ash, this is scientifically untrue. The house was only on fire for 45 minutes and even in crematoriums, it takes way longer for bones to kind of break down into ash. The bones would still remain. So where are they? Well, John and Jenny believe that something nefarious happened. With John being critical of Italian dictator Mussolini, could the Italian mafia have burned their house down? An inquest found that the fire was caused due to faulty wiring. However, the house's wiring was checked shortly before the fire. To add to this, the Sodders claim that the lights were on while the house was burning, meaning that if this is true, the cause could not have been due to faulty wiring. The lights would have been off. They believe that the children were kidnapped and were still out there somewhere. So who were the suspects? Well, the most obvious one is a man who threatened George that his house would be burned down and children destroyed. I mean, it was him, right? Like, that is, that's so specific that he said your house is going to burn and your children are going to be destroyed. It's him. Absolutely, it's him. <laughs> he had a part to play. Don't get me wrong, he had a part to play. But guess what, right? This very same man was a juror on the inquest. I mean, the population in the town was about 1,500 at the time. So there would have been a few hundred options to choose from. I'm going to link a video in the description that goes into further detail on the ordeal because there were potential breakthroughs throughout the years, but they all seem to mysteriously come up short. If I were to put my two cents on it, it seemed to be that there was something else at play. There were too many coincidental accidents or rulings for me for the children just to be burnt by faulty wirings. The only problem, however, is that say they were alive, even to this day, the children would now be in their 80s and they still haven't been found. You would think that if they were kidnapped and kept alive, they would have been released by now, but you never know. The final child alive, Sylvia, still very much believes that the rest of the children did survive the house fire, and she and her children are still intent on spreading the story so that hopefully, one day, we can get some closure. Okay, let's head into one of my personal favourites here on the iceberg. Put your science hats on, ladies and gentlemen, and try not to have an existential crisis, because this is the Fermi Paradox. Simply put, the Fermi Paradox is the where them aliens at paradox, which attempts to answer where them aliens at. Now, in our galaxy alone, there are billions of stars similar to the sun, and many of these contain planets, and many of these planets could be considered habitable for life. Now, Earth itself is 4.54 billion years old, and many of these stars are a lot older than Earth, some by billions of years. Humans have only existed for 300,000 years and we're beginning to make steps in colonising our solar system, likely beginning space exploration in the next couple of hundred years, provided that we don't die out. Now, if some planets are billions of years older than us, you would think that the night sky would be lit aglow with spaceships, and space would be littered with signs of intelligent life. But look up to the sky. Especially those watching at night, look up. Ain't no aliens up there. No UFOs going by. If all this is true, which it is, the Fermi Paradox asks, where are the aliens at? Even if there is a 0.00001% chance of intelligent life forming, that's still millions of planets out there. Why have we not found any signs of alien life? So there are many explanations, some of them optimistic, some of them less so, and I won't be able to cover them all here, so I'm going to link Kurtz Gazat's video on it. One theory is that there is a great filter, and for life to exist, it needs to pass the filter. Perhaps life itself is extremely, minusculely rare, and perhaps that life developing is extremely, minusculely rare. Perhaps in all cases, life develops and it just blows itself up, or it depletes the world that it inhabits of its natural resources before it's able to explore the galaxy. Whatever it is, if you subscribe to the Great Filter Theory, there's only a select few that can make it past this filter. If we made it past the filter, we might be one of the first species in the galaxy to do so, and therefore life is possible. If we haven't passed the Great Filter though, and it's instead in front of us, we are in big trouble. Another theory is that perhaps the universe has already been colonised by a superpower of species that has no feelings and just destroys planets when they're able to develop intelligent life. Perhaps space travel isn't simply possible and humanity should just pack it in. It takes too long to travel the universe and no amount of science can solve this. Maybe we're even the first in the universe to develop intelligent life. 300,000 years in the grand scheme of things is extremely quick 
and maybe it just takes billions of years for intelligent life to spawn. Perhaps aliens are all around us, but we as a species don't understand. Maybe they're sending messages, but we just don't have the right technology to understand it. We use radio waves right now. Radio waves. I mean, if you're an alien species and you're more developed, you're not going to be using radio waves. They probably got their own way of sending messages and it just goes over our heads. My personal favorite theory, however, is that aliens do exist and they know that we're here, but they're waiting for us to get our act together before they come into contact with us. I mean, if humans are going to hate each other based on their color or creed, how are they going to react when something of a literal different species comes into contact with us? Perhaps the only way we'll ever get aliens to talk to us is if we end all war, become a planet of peace, and develop enough technology to show that we're worth their time. There are so many possibilities we don't know, and the reason we haven't found aliens is unknown. Completely, completely unknown. We have no idea. And to complete this mental breakdown of mind explosion that some might be experiencing right now, we're going to be covering why is there something rather than nothing? I exist. I know that much. Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I am. I personally know that even if everything around me is an illusion, I am conscious because I am thinking, I exist. If you're watching this and you exist, the same as me, you will know that you exist. However, for you to exist, there needs to be something. But that something came from somewhere, right? Many people believe that the Big Bang created everything, but what created the Big Bang? Say it was atoms. What caused atoms to exist? And what caused that to happen? Time is a strange thing, and we experience it every day, every second, every moment. One thing happens, and then another, and then another. You're born, you grow up, you marry, you have children, your children grow up, they marry, they have children, etc. We experience time linearly. However, that means that either nothing made something, which is impossible because nothing is nothing, or that something was always there, but how did that something get there? It must have been created from nothing, which is impossible because nothing is nothing. Now, this will be the last time I ask you in the video, what do you think? Let me know your answers down in the comments because this mystery is unknown. There are no right or wrong answers yet, not until we discover it. One popular theory and a personal favorite of mine is that time doesn't actually travel in a straight line, but instead loops back, meaning that the end of the universe is the cause of the universe and everything just repeats itself, which is awesome if you're living a good life, but awful if you're living a bad life because you're doomed to repeat it for eternity. But that would mean you also don't really die because you'll just come back as a child again. But it also means that your fate is predetermined because you'll be born again in a few billion years the exact same. And you've probably lived this life millions if not billions of times before. And you'll live it again millions if not billions of times. This theory could also explain deja vu, maybe? It's something to think about. But also, if you're living this life forever, please don't mess it up because if you do, you'll be doomed to repeat it forever and ever. So yeah, don't f*** up. And the first way not to do that is to subscribe because that's it from me and I sincerely thank you for getting to the end of this video. If it's not too much trouble, I humbly ask for you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We're building this community from the ground up and we would love to have you along for the ride. I recently made an Instagram account. I know I have a lot of social media accounts for Fox Akimbo, but if you're a fan or a viewer, please do go follow it. I do a bit of photography in my spare time and so hopefully we can get some good looking pictures up there and I can interact with you a bit more. We also have a Discord, a link in the description as usual, as well as a Twitter and a Gmail for Iceberg Charts to be sent if you want a shout out. This iceberg itself was created by Crescent Commoner, so shout out to Crescent. Also, I need to give a huge shout out to Fei Fei Loveheart, who has yet again come through for me and has done my banner art. I'm going to link Fei Fei's socials in the description, and if you'd like to have a browse through, if you like the art, please, please do. Lastly, please let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see me do next, as I'm only 37 videos in, and I'm already out of ideas. Thank you for watching.